Hello everybody, um, I'm a new laws physics and today we're going to be looking at some related problems from the 2020 actual sign exam. If you're not in the US, you probably don't know what this is, and it's just, this is a yearly exam that occurs every year, and it's to select for the team that the US will send to the International Physics Olympiad, which if you're watching this video, you may know about. So, I just picked three interesting problems from it, and let's go over them. Okay. In 21. A circular table has radius r, n greater than 2 equally spaced legs of length h attached to its perimeter. Suppose the table has a uniform mass density and total mass m, and neglect the mass of the legs. Assume the table does not slip, and the minimum horizontal force Need the tip of the table is. So this is a multiple choice exam, but I left out the choices because they're not really necessary. You never really use choices in a multiple choice exam. Usually you just solve it and find which choice is correct. Let's try to draw that again. Oops, not bad. Um, we're going to draw just a hexagonal table because it doesn't really matter. It's just going to help us gain intuition. And draw the final leg here. So see the center of mass is right there in the center. Um, we know the radius is r, it is h, and what we're going to do here is we have to figure out a place to either bounce forces or torques. Since this we're looking for minimal horizontal force, so we're essentially looking for how to it's either the net torque equal to zero, so that just in, just barely increasing the force will cause it to tip over. Or we could look for force, but we're looking for tipping over, so we're actually looking for torque. What we're going to do is we are going to measure torque about this axis through these two legs. Why? Why do we do that? Well, just think about how the table will move and we want to tip it over and it'll stay on two legs. So now let's consider the forces on this table. First we have gravity, like that, with magnitude and g. And then we're going to have a horizontal force. So if we don't want to apply it like near the legs here, right, because we want a large torque, we want, it, we want it to apply high up, and that's going to have magnitude, we'll just call it f for now, and because we're trying to find that. And so we just need a balanced torque here. And we already know the moment arm of this force here, so we have FH is equal to, now we just need to find the moment arm of gravity. And that's just going to be this distance right here, per perpendicular distance, right? And if we can just find this angle here, we can relate R to this distance. And the angle can simply be found by using the fact that we have N legs. N legs is equal to N sides. So then we can divide so then this total angle here, so that triangle here, this is just going to be 2 pi over n. So then half of that angle is going to be pi over n, so fh is equal to mg times the moment arm, which is going to be r times cosine of pi over n. So then h, I'm sorry, then f is equal to mgr over h and cosine pi over n. So if you are new to physics or just starting out physics, I don't know if personally for me it was, this problem might have been really difficult. You don't you're barely you're barely given any information and you just want to tip it over. And that's kind of difficult to work with, but once you start practicing these you'll be able to see that you can kind of set up a configuration like that. Let's move on to the next one. And 24. Um, in the 24, a mass m is connected to one and a v0-length spring with spring constant k. The other end of the spring is connected to a frictionless spring mount around a horizontal pole so that the mass can swing in a vertical circle of radius r around the pole. The setup is shown. The setup is shown in the figure below. Where is the vertical distance h between the center of the or circular orbit and the axis of the pole? Assume that both the diameter of the pole and the breast length of the spring 
are negligible compared to R. So let's consider, um, so when I actually solved this, I did it in a bit of a convoluted way. I actually, what I did was I considered the mass up here and considered the mass up here and set up a bunch of conservation of energy equations and then I solved it. I eventually got it right, but it was a pain. I'm going to show a bit of a cleaner method. And so let's consider when the, when the block is on this axis here, the diameter and horizontal. It's right here, and this is the spring. That's the spring. And this is particularly nice because we know the net force is going to be, um, going to be inward because it's moving in a circle, right? And centripetal acceleration tells us that the acceleration is just going to be toward the center. So we can find the component. Basically, let's draw the, let's just draw the block here. There's going to be a force in the spring in somewhat of that direction. And there's going to be a gravitational force. But we want the net force to be horizontal. So this, so if we draw the components, the force of the spring, we want this force here to be equal to gravity. And so let's just find the total force in the spring. We know the circle has radius r, right? So, and this is a zero length spring, and we're given the spring constant. So all we need to know to figure out the net force, not the net force, the force in the spring, is this length right here. And this is r and this is h, because we're considering the horizontal moments. For the moment when it is horizontal, so this length is going to be square root of r squared plus h squared. And to get the force, we multiply that by k. And so now we have the force from here, and we want to find this component here. That's just going to be trigonometry, and that's going to be sine. So the sine of this angle here is h over that quantity there. So if we multiply that times h over root this thing here these two will cancel and the force the vertical force in the spring is k times h and we need that to be equal to mg and so this is really easy we have h is equal to mg over k now this is a quite a nice result quite a nice result nice and simple and if you set up equa terrible equations like i did it would be pre pretty frustrating when you come up with such a nice result because there was a setup here that was quite interesting. Let's move to number 25. And uh, These are all the 20s, but um, I just chose them because I found them interesting. And there are quite a bit of difficult problems in the first 10 as well. But I just found these more interesting. And number 25. Ball of neg negligible radius and mass m is connected to two ideal strings. Each spring has length L0. The springs are connected to the ball inside a box of length 2L0, and the ball is allowed to come to equilibrium as shown. Under what condition is this equilibrium stable with respect to small horizontal displacements? Oh. So the method for solving problems like this is given right here. Small horizontal displacements. You consider the mass when it's displaced horizontally like about here, and then you just consider the forces, and you want the force to always be pointing back towards the center, to pointing back to return. So basically, we want to um, consider lens like that, and that a couple of equations. But we kind of want to know where the mass is right now, and that's probably going to be important later. So let's just go ahead and do that because that's simple. So. Let's just let that be the midpoint, so it's L0 and L0. Then, let's balance forces on this mass. We have the, the net force from the two strings, we're going to ignore gravity here, has to point with magnitude mg upward. And let's say this distance is x right here from this mid midline. And what's going to be the forces on this mass here? So since this is compressed, it's going to be pushing up with magnitude a sub 2 times x. And the, for the other one, similarly, it's going to be pulling up with magnitude k sub 1 times x. 
we need that to be equal to the gravitational force and the force on the mass is zero. So that's going to be equal to mg and x is equal to mg over k1 plus k2. Okay, so now let's consider when the mass is displaced slightly. I'm not going to draw strings, I'm just going to draw straight lines. And let's call this distance here d. If it's displaced slightly by d, so this is these angles are going to be quite small because we're only considering small horizontal displacements. Let's exaggerate it so that we can actually see what's going on. And basically, since it's a very a very small approximation, what we can actually say is these lengths are approximately equal. And and so that means that the force here is just going to be what it originally was, which is k sub two times x. And okay, so let's draw the mass here. Um, mass here again, and let's look at the forces. We have the k sub two x here, and we have k sub one x here. And we're going to look at the horizontal components. So that's all we're worrying about, right? And so this is case of case of one x, and so we can find the sine of these angles because we we know their geometry from right here. So we we want to say that case of one x times d over the square root of l zero plus x squared plus d squared is greater than k sub 2 times x times d over the square root of l0 minus x squared plus d squared. So, so we can cancel these terms right here. And notice that d is incredibly small. So since it's squared, it's just going to disappear. And we can regard it as zero. And so from this point, we can just do a little bit of algebra. We can rearrange to k sub one times L zero minus x minus k sub two times L zero plus x over L zero squared minus x squared is greater than zero. And we can just get, a, get rid of this by multiplying. And so let's rearrange here again. And what we arrive at is what we arrive at here is going to be k sub 1 minus k sub 2 times well, 0 is greater than um, k sub 1 plus k sub 2 x and what our expression for x is right here so this is equal to mg and so our final answer is going to be k sub 1 minus k sub 2 is greater than mg over l0 and thank you that's it for today